Hello, 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 welcome back to the channel. So let's continue our previous video and do one more problem on evaluating indefinite integrals of trigonometric functions or a combination of trigonometric functions over here. So in this question, we have to evaluate the integral of sine to the power 36 t cos cube t dt. I know this expression would seem very much complex at first sight, but the process to solve this integral is very simple if you know the approach, if you know the correct approach on how to solve this integral over here. So whenever you have a combination of sine and cos functions together, like in this indefinite integral, it usually gives us an idea that it's better to use substitution because sine and cos are derivatives of each other. So if we use substitution, we know that if we take our sine function to be the u function, we can automatically adjust the cos function based on the changes that we usually do in substitution which we will also see when solving this integral over here. But now the catch is, what should we take our u function to be? Should it be sine of t or should it be cos of t, right? So that is the main question in this type of indefinite integral. If you want to simplify your indefinite integral in a way that it becomes simpler than the original integral expression over here. So now we have an idea that we will solve it using substitution. We'll solve this indefinite integral using substitution because sine and cos are derivatives of each other. But the main concern is should we take u equals sine t or should we take u equals cos t? And there is indeed a trick to know what you should pick your u function to be. So whenever you have a combination of sine and cos functions for which one power is even, like in the case of sine to the power 36 t, and one power is odd, like in the case of cos cube t, you always have to pick the u function to be the function which has an even power. So for example, in this case, since sine t has an even power, which is 36 in this case, we'll assume a u function to be sine t in this case. So that is the trick. Again, a basic overview about the trick that whenever you have a combination of sine and cos functions, and you have to calculate the indefinite integral or the definite integral of that combined expression, you always pick the u function to be the one which has an even power over here. So since in this case, sine to the power 36 t has an even power, we'll assume our u function to be sine of t in this case. And you'll clearly notice why we picked sine t and not cos t in order to simplify this expression over here by using substitution. So now if we assume our u function to be sine t, we know that our du would be cos t dt, right? And now let's write this integral over here so that it's easier to visualize what we are doing when we are using substitution for our calculation of indefinite integral over here. So the integral expression can be written as sine to the power 36 t times cos square t because we want a cos t dt term. So that is why I'm splitting cos cube t into cos square t, cos t dt in this case, right? So now in order to use substitution, we know that since we are assuming a u function to be sine t, we can change this expression sine to the power 36 t can be easily converted to u to the power 36, right? Cos t dt can be easily converted to du, but in order to convert cos square t, we'll have to use another identity over here, right? Because we can clearly see that we can easily substitute our u into this expression. We can easily substitute du in place of this one. But in order to use substitution for the whole integral, we'll have to do something with cos square t, right? And we also know about a property of cos square and sine square functions that sine square x plus cos square x equals 1, right? So cos square x can be simply written as 1 minus sine square x, right? So if I convert this cos square t into 1 minus sine square t, I know that my u function is sine of t. So this would be easily converted to 1 minus u square, right? And I'll get rid of my cos square expression, which I didn't need in my original integral expression over here, right? So let's write this again. So we can write this expression as sine to the power 36 t. Cos square t can be written as 1 minus sine square t and then cos t dt will be changed to simply du in this case, right? And then we can write cos t dt over here, right? And now let's make all those modifications based on the assumptions that we have. So sine to the power 36 t will be changed to u to the power 36. 1 minus sine square t will be changed to 1 minus u square. 
cos t dt will be simply changed to du in this case, right? And then this process, calculation of this indefinite integral is pretty simple, right? In order to solve this integral, you can basically use the power rule. So now let's first divide this integral. So if we divide this integral into two parts, it would be simply calculating u to the power 36 du minus integral u to the power 38 du over here, right? So if you use the power rule, it would become u to the power 37 upon 37 minus u to the power 39 upon 39. And since you're calculating an indefinite integral, you'll add the constant of integration over here, right? So now this is your final answer based on the u function. But now, since in this case, you had to calculate the indefinite integral based on the variable t. So you'll have to convert your final answer in terms of t only and not in terms of any other function over here. So since we assumed our u to be sine of t, the conversion is pretty simple, right? So our final answer in this case would simply be sine to the power 37 t upon 37 minus sine to the power 39 t over 39 plus the constant of integration over here, right? So that's it for this video. Again, it's a very simple problem if you know the approach on how to solve this type of indefinite integral over here. And this also applies to definite integral. In the case of definite integral, you'll calculate the indefinite integral first and then use the endpoints in order to calculate the definite integral, right? But the basic idea or the main takeaway from this video is whenever you have a combination of a sine and a cos function where one of the powers is even and one of the powers is odd, you always assume the u function to be the one which has an even power, right? Just like in this question, we assumed a u function to be sine t because sine function had an even power in this indefinite integral over here, right? So feel free to comment down in this video if you have any doubts. Follow the channel in order to get notified about the other videos that I'll be uploading. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. Take care.